Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven and welcome to episode three of my home decor update series. If you have not seen episode one and two, this is a series where I'm taking you guys along the journey of fully furnishing and decorating my new home. Well, I guess it's not brand, brand new anymore. I moved in last summer and I do also have a whole series of videos on my channel about picking out this house, building this house, moving in, everything in between. So if you are new to my channel, definitely check out all of my previous videos. If if you're interested. But this year I just wanted to do update videos about once a month just to kind of give you guys updates on what new things I've added to the house, kind of what I'm thinking, DIY projects, just all things home. So in the last episode we talked a little bit about my bedroom, the living room, and we're almost done with Zaya's bedroom. But in this video I'm kind of shifting gears because I wanted to dive into a brand new project and that is the craft room. Well, it wasn't really a craft room ever to begin with. It's really just a closet. Actually, I don't really know what the technical name of this space is. Basically, this is an area that could have been expanded into a theater room behind Zaya's playroom, but I really didn't want a theater room or need a theater room. So it just kind of ended up being like an awkward, large, but still like small, small enough to be like not really a full room, but large enough to be like a really big closet or storage space. I don't know, it's kind of just like an in-between space with no windows and no AC vents. <laughs> so when I first moved in, I asked you guys, what do you think I should do with this space? Cause it's a lot of usable space. And some of you guys said like, maybe like a reading nook, maybe like a panic room for emergencies. And then my mom suggested a craft room. That was mainly because this room ended up being just a storage space for mostly craft supplies, art supplies, but just a lot of junk, honestly. It was full to the brim with just junk and stuff that I wanted to get out of the way. It was ridiculous how full this room was. And I actually filmed taking out everything and sorting it, but unfortunately I did lose that footage. So you guys won't be able to actually see how much stuff was in there and how long it took to sort through. But let me just tell you, it was a lot of stuff. Everything is sorted into bins and back into the drawers. At this point, again, I lost some of the footage, but right now we've got everything sorted pretty much how it's going to go so we had to completely rearrange and put like items together so we've got like this is the paint bin this is like the kids stuff glitter and glue and scissors and paper everything is categorized thread ribbon sewing supplies beads then i've got this whole pile of costumes because i keep a lot of halloween stuff just in case i need it for a future video or use it in a different way for an upcoming costume i really wanted this room to actually be functional and actually make sense not just be a storage closet but an actual craft room so the idea is to put things that are going to be most commonly used at the crafting station, which is now going to consist of these metal drawers with a tabletop on top. So everything that's going in these metal drawers are like the cricketing supplies, because my mom does a lot of cricketing. This is going to be her cricketing space now. Scissors, glue, things that you would use more often are being categorized into the actual drawers of the crafting space. <laughs> Whereas things that don't get used as often are going to go behind me in bins like this onto this cubby thing, which I'm keeping to store stuff like, you know, yarn and just different random things that I will still use eventually for different projects, but it's just not like an everyday thing. Now that everything has been sorted through, we were able to just put the actual items that we're keeping and that we're gonna use into the drawers on either side of this tabletop area. So. We we sorted through the items and definitely got rid of a lot of stuff. There was definitely some trash and stuff that just needed to be thrown away, but I always end up donating a lot of stuff. So I made a donation pile. And one of the main things that I decided to get rid of was one of my sets of drawers that was in there. And this is because this was my mom's brilliant idea, actually credit to Chef Tony. If we remove this set of drawers, then we can create an actual workspace here. So if you remember my whole house organizing video, I took out the table that was in my glam room and replaced it with a smaller tabletop. Well, I saved that larger tabletop because it is getting repurposed in this craft room. So all I literally did is 
put the tabletop on top of the two sets of drawers. This tabletop is a little bit beat up, but this is for a craft space anyway. It's gonna continue to get beat up, so I would rather recycle it and make use of it. One of the main things that this space is going to be used for is Cricut machine projects, because if you guys watch my videos, you know that me and my mom get together and we use the Cricut machine for so many things in like all of my videos. And my mom doesn't really have a whole lot of space at her house for like a whole separate DIY craft room or anything like that. So I'm like, hey, you live nearby. Why don't you just keep everything at my house? You're always over here anyway, doing projects over here anyway. This can be the Cricut machine room. It can be the sewing machine room. It could be for painting, for drawing, for just DIY projects in general, just everything like that. So scissors, paint, paper, and all the stuff for the Cricut machine is going to be stored in these drawers right here in the workspace. The other thing that we added in this workspace is this little rail of buckets. I don't really know what it's called. This is also from Ikea. I actually already had this. This was back in my previous town home. I used it to hold Zaya's crayons and stuff like that. What is this? What? On my shirt. Anyways, I was gonna say, so this little rail of buckets, I had it mounted in my town home and I think my mom and my dad helped me mount it the first time. And I just remember that they had to redo it like five times. I don't remember why or how we actually figured it out in the end. So I'm a little concerned about <laughs> this mounting process. Wow, we did it on the first try. Maybe we're learning a thing or two through all this home improvement stuff. Then we have these things. So I'm glad that I hung on to this because this works perfectly above the tabletop to hold things like pencils, pens, markers, stuff like that. I actually did order another exact set of these things as well because I wanted to have two rows because I have so many different types of pencils and pens. I wanted each type to have its own bucket. So I'm just waiting for that to come in the mail. Ikea is experiencing some delayed shipment time. So I'll add that in whenever I get it. One thing that did get delivered from Ikea is the chair that I bought to go with this space of course if you have a table you need a chair so i just got a little simple white chair from ikea to put here <laughs> who designed this this stupid ikea chair Wow, a whole cricket station. And then on the opposite side of the room, I have this cubby shelf area. I feel like I have so many cubby shelves and have gone through so many cubby shelves in my life. This is also a recycled piece of furniture that was elsewhere in my other homes and stuff like that, but it is still useful. So this is where all the rest of the craft supplies will live. Sorted through everything, organized everything, put them into clear containers, that way we can kind of more easily see what's really in there. And then of course, broke out the Cricut machine and made some custom labels for each category. So I got six of these smaller bins for like smaller items and two of them fit in each cubby. So that's three of the cubbies. For the bottom six cubbies, I was planning on putting some of the larger items into larger clear bins. So I ordered these bins from Target and they actually did come pretty quickly. But when I opened the box, literally all the bins were broken. What? They're all broken. Bruh. I have the worst luck with ordering stuff online. 90% of everything I order comes damaged, broken, wrong. I have to do so many returns. Look at this, this was so poorly packaged. Maybe one survivor. Pay money for this? <laughs> Dang it. Now we gotta uh, 
send these back, try again. I was super disappointed because Target never lets me down, but honestly, I don't really order a lot of stuff from Target. I tend to only shop in store. We can't really shop in store that much right now, so I don't know. I actually ended up deciding not to even keep these things at all, and we're just, we're doing a whole different thing, but I was pretty disappointed about that because Target never lets me down. The original plan was to store all of our costumes. Like I have a lot of like Halloween costumes and Christmas costumes and just different stuff like that, that I use as like pieces of DIY costumes because I always do a DIY costume every year. So I like to hang on to this stuff and I was gonna store it, like I said, in these clear bins from Target with this cubby shelf. But then I realized like, do I really need these costumes in these bins right here in the craft room? Like I could probably just put these in the garage. And now I am just left with these two larger bins, Christmas costumes and Halloween costumes. These are going to go in the garage. Only thing is my garage shelving is already full, so I'm going to have to remove something here to make space for this stuff, which shouldn't be a problem because not only do I have my garage and the craft room as storage space, but I also have an attic and I also have a whole extra closet with the guest room. I honestly feel like anything that has like paper or books with it probably shouldn't be in the garage anyway for optimum storage. So I am going to move this stuff either to the guest room closet or another closet or attic within the home. These are like old yearbooks and photo albums, which I think should be inside the house. So that'll go inside the house. Now I have space to put the costumes here like that. If you have not seen my garage organizing video, by the way, you should check it out. So the costumes are now in the garage, which means now I just kind of have room to grow on this cubby shelf with the rest of the six spaces. I feel like now that I have this craft room, hopefully it will inspire me to just kind of get crafty again. I used to be really, really heavy into DIYs, drawing, painting, just anything like that. And I honestly have not done too much of it recently, but now that I have this space I hope to you know pursue that passion again some other items that I definitely do want to keep in this craft room are all of my wrapping paper gift bags tissue paper gift boxes I have a whole collection of stuff because I do like to recycle and reuse gift bags so I definitely need to get some sort of actual storage system I've seen some cute stuff like cute ways to store rolls of wrapping paper cute ways to store the ribbon so I definitely need to set that up I just haven't gotten that together yet the good news is is the whole purpose of redoing and organizing this room is to make it functional so that some crafts will actually be made so that some DIY projects will actually be done and halfway through filming this video because it was filmed over the course of a couple weeks the room actually already got used quite a bit because my mom was making some DIY masks you know people need masks right now and she made a whole bunch of them she went in there broke out the sewing machine and had a little mask assembly line going and made a bunch of masks to donate and to give to friends and family members so I really like the fact that she was able to come over go up there have all her supplies in one spot work on some projects leave her unfinished projects in there and just close the door and it's out of the way versus you know breaking out the sewing machine and setting it up in my glam room or in the kitchen or something like that I like that this is like its own little closed off space speaking of it being a closed off space though one thing that I probably will do is actually put a lot on this door because of the fact that there is paint and scissors and markers and all types of stuff in there that I really don't want Zaya sneaking into. Not that I think she will be sneaking into it because honestly that stuff was in there this whole time anyway and I haven't had too much of a problem with it but just in case I don't want it. To, it's right there by her playroom so I might be putting a lock on this door just to keep her out.
onto the playroom. It's functional, it's cute or whatever. Like it pretty much has everything that Zaya would need in there, but it's just not that cute. I feel like it needs a touch of pizzazz, a touch of design. It just needs a little bit of a revamp because right now it's just kind of a hodgepodge of hand-me-down furniture and just like whatever works. But this is an open space. This is the first thing you see when you walk up my stairs. There's no door on it or anything. So even though I want this to mainly just be like a functional space for Zaya to play, I also do want it to be cute because it is like out in the open. So as you guys saw in my house organizing video, I did organize all the things that are in these cubbies, the toys, which now have beautiful custom Cricut labels these are iron-on labels since these are fabric boxes my mom did these ironed them on so we had the play food the dress up the baby doll and the Peppa Pig bins I don't really like these bins there's a difference between the threshold brand and the pillow fort brand the pillow fort brand from Target is way better these have like a little thin cardboard in there and they're just not I don't, I don't like them as much. So, went ahead and bought some more of the pink pillow fort ones and these have been custom labeled as well for the homeschool stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch those over and they'll just be all eight matching bins. Honestly, these ones also just weren't really big enough, like the half size, because I'm starting to accumulate more homeschool stuff. So having the bigger size and being able to fully like hide the stuff within there. I think it's gonna help the room look less cluttered when you don't see stuff like spilling out the top like that. So even the workbooks fit completely in there to where when it's put away, you just don't see anything. You just see a nice label box. So boom, I think that looks a lot better just having all of them matching. They're all labeled. I know it's kind of hard to see the labels from a distance, but I actually kind of like that. It just helps look more uniform. So one row for toys, one row for homeschooling. This is also helping to limit the amount of toys that accumulate because you gotta make it fit in these four boxes pretty much. But here's the thing. These bins are not staying in this cubby shelf. They are going to be moved over here. So the first thing I decided to do was get rid of this useless piece of Ikea furniture that I had as like the entertainment center under the TV. This was a hand-me-down from the previous place that I lived. It was in my living room at first. It just got put in here just because I had it. I hate it for several reasons. It got the job done aesthetically, but the doors and the drawers quickly started to like, like why? why? why and it's so hard to use because there's no handles I mean I guess I could have put handles on it if I wanted to like a little DIY project but and this it doesn't work well on carpet because the drawers sit literally on the floor flush to the floor so you can't pull the drawers out on top of carpet this is not functional it's not doing anything for me aesthetically. It's just blending into the wall. And it's also just a whole bunch of extra storage space that has essentially been empty this whole time. So it's gotta go. <gasps> There's a bunch of toys behind here. What's hidden behind the entertainment center? Oh, what do you know? Toys and goldfish. Who knows how long that goldfish has been there. The truth is, all we just did was scoot this over here <laughs> in the middle of the hallway because it's way too heavy to carry downstairs. With everything going on in the world right now, I can't have anybody come to my house and help me get rid of it. So this might just have to stay here for a while because I'm impatient and I wanted to get started on this room. So that got kicked out and instead I ordered, you guessed it, a cubby shelf from Ikea. I just love cubby shelves, okay?
I said I was gonna be going for big girl vibes, big girl furniture, nothing too cheap. I was really trying to get upscale stuff for my house, but for a playroom, Ikea is honestly where it's at. And I feel like you can add in little dashes of Ikea furniture and still have it look cute. So I just felt like this cubby shelf was the perfect thing to go under here because we have so many cubby boxes and that's just what works best for me to store toys and stuff like that. Kind of the idea behind having this low down horizontal piece of furniture with the cubbies with all Zaya's toys is that it's kind of like Montessori style, meaning that Zaya can access her own stuff herself without having to reach up high or ask for my help, which means that she can also clean it up and put it away herself. The entertainment center was not the only piece of Ikea furniture that got booted out of this room. The other very large piece of Ikea furniture, the bigger cubby shelf, got kicked out as well. This is a hammy, hammy, hammy down. It was my mom's and then it was in my Dallas apartment, then it was in my townhome, now it's here. It's all discolored and stuff. Not to say that it's not still functional, but I just didn't need it. It was too big, it was taking up space, the cubby boxes already got moved under the TV. So this is now empty and um, we actually just threw it in the garage because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with either of these pieces of furniture right now, along with a lot of the stuff that I cleaned out of the craft room. It's currently still to this day, just sitting in my garage and I just cleaned out my garage. I feel like I just cleaned it out and then it gets full of more stuff. But I'm gonna try and call the Salvation Army to come pick it up or just see if anybody wants it who can come pick it up. I'm giving this stuff away for free. I'm just like, please, somebody take it off of my hands. Actually, quick little side note about these baskets that came out of the piece of furniture that I'm getting rid of. I was gonna get rid of them completely because I'm like, oh, I don't really think they have a use. They're kind of like floppy. But I'm like, wait a minute, Zaya's closet could really use some cuter, better baskets. These are literally from my freshman year of college. These are from 2011. Yes, 2011 is when I bought these things. I mean, they have held up very, very well. Good, good sturdy basket, but like not that cute, I don't know. So I could switch these out. And also, since I have three of these, I could do like one, two, three, because there's three shelves right here. I'm always just looking for ways to repurpose and still use stuff within my house because I switch stuff around, you know, I'm upgrading a lot of stuff, but as I'm upgrading, I'm like, okay, let me take the ugliest thing out and at least upgrade it to something that's like mid-level in the meantime. And then I can donate this because this is a really good basket to donate. Somebody could definitely get use out of it or maybe I'll change my mind and feel like I can use it somewhere in a spot where it's not going to be seen. I don't know. So this had all these like little backpacks, all her little bags on this shelf just sitting here. But I could take one of these baskets and actually put them in here. Now that the piece of furniture is gone, it leaves this whole open wall pretty much up to my imagination. And my imagination tells me that I should do a chalkboard wall. I really wanna do a magnetic chalkboard wall with like rolls of paper that you can also pull down, maybe even a whiteboard in there somewhere too. I don't know, I just really like the idea of having like a whole big wall be a space where you can create art on different mediums and I was waiting to do this because I wanted Zaya to get a little bit older. I didn't want her to be too young and get confused between drawing on this wall and drawing on all the rest of the walls in the house. But I think she is definitely old enough to understand the rules now and old enough to really enjoy something like this. And I've seen so many cute pictures on Pinterest and stuff like that with playrooms with chalkboard walls. And I'm personally leaning towards one that is framed in. So it's not gonna be the entire wall painted, but it is going to have a frame around it. Now this is going to be a whole DIY week long project itself. So this is going to be a separate video. So be on the lookout for that. I really think the chalk wall is going to set this room off and really just, you know, give it that extra pizzazz. Like I said, I really want this room to not only be functional, but be cute. So I know a couple other things that I would need are some sort of book storage. So bookshelves for all Zaya's little books. Definitely want to put curtains up just 
to make it look cuter in there. Probably switch out the rug and add a few little extra accessories. If you guys watched the DIY Playhouse video, you got a really good look at the Playhouse in that video. And I just think it's so cute and it turned out so well. And it does look cute in the playroom, but the rest of the playroom it's not really matching the vibes of the cute little playhouse. So I'm gonna try and just kind of make everything go together, make everything cute, but still really functional. I don't want this to just be a room that's full of junk, full of a bunch of toys that Zaya doesn't even play with and just like useless. I want this to be a space for imagination and creation and education and just be like a fun, happy place when you walk in there. Like you just want to be in there and play pretend and learn and grow and color and just everything. Like I just have this whole vision in my head and right now it's not doing it for me. So we have a lot of work to do still on the playroom, but I think we got a good start and I at least have kind of like my ideas planned out. But the last thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is in Zaya's bedroom. So in the last video, you guys got a really good look at how her bedroom kind of all came together with the wallpaper and everything. And it was only missing a few more pieces. And one of the things that I wanted to try is kind of switching around the mirrors in there. So I actually just ordered a brand new LED crystal mirror for my closet that I'm really excited about. It hasn't come in yet, but I'm gonna show y'all when it comes in for sure. But since I ordered that, I took my existing full length mirror that was in my closet and I brought it up into Zaya's room to see how it would look in her dress up area. You guys suggested that maybe I should put a full length floor mirror here and then move the existing mirror above her dresser. Just kind of rearrange it a little bit. Unfortunately, I didn't really like the way that my old mirror looked in her room. It just looked off. Don't think I'm going to end up using that, but I do think I am going to end up using her existing mirror above her dresser because I think that looks really cute and it just fits there really nicely. On the other hand, I do still feel like a taller mirror would look good over on her wall, but I have to find the right kind. I'm thinking maybe like an oval shape, maybe with a gold frame, something a little bit more girly to go there rather than just like a white block like my old mirror. So yeah, I don't know. I still have to figure that out. That wall has been giving me trouble <laughs> since the beginning of this project, but we are gonna figure it out. I think the dresser area looks looks cute though. The last thing that I do have to do over there is switch out her drawer pulls for gold drawer pulls because right now they're silver and everything else in her room is gold. So I think it would be nice to switch those out. So yeah, still a few, few more little finishing touches to add to Zaya's room. Of course, a lot more work to be done in the playroom and a lot more work to be done throughout the house just overall. But I feel like I made some good progress recently. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you have any ideas or suggestions and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!